and this is the shell that I will be painting now. I'm going to paint it in 20 minutes, so not too much detail, just enough. Um, it's going to be quite a loose painting, so these are little short videos just to show you that even if you don't have time every day to paint, you can just put aside maybe half an hour over the weekend or whenever you have a moment. But do try to make yourself a little bit of time just to paint something for yourself, especially during this very stressful time for everyone, especially now. <laughs> anyway, um, we are in lockdown, so there might be quite a few noises. Um, so just excuse all the noises from everyone. I just want to, not sure where my putty eraser is, but I actually need that one, but I'm just going to quickly use my, it's a very soft eraser. This is called Breeze Watercolor Paper, uh, 300 GSM. Use any brand you like, uh, preferably a good brand of watercolor paper. And I'm not going to worry too much about all the, um, you know, pencil marks on my painting. Just want to see. I'm looking for this brush just to remove all the eraser dust markings. And like I said, this is a very loose watercolor painting. So I'm going to go in with a, obviously it's now, um, I just want to get a tissue paper. It's a white paper, so I do want to paint quite a nice background. So I'm just going to go in with. A little bit of a grey underwash, very, very watery. And I might have to use my hair dryer because we want to keep this under 20 minutes. So I might use my hair dryer. It is a hot day here today, even though it is winter. It's quite a lovely sunny day. So um, I might have to use my hair dryer. Okay, so I just cleaned out my water because I want quite um, clean water on my palette. And I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna mix a little bit of this pink that's on my palette because this shell has a little bit more of a pink undertone so and we want to keep it as loose as possible so this was part of my rose palette marshmallow rose palette that i've used for painting this is going to be very very soft so noisy plain and just very very lightly As you can see, um, it's very watery. I just mixed a little bit of, this is alizarin crimson, and I just mixed a little drop of the Payne's Grey mixture that I had on my palette. And then, so let's get my hair dryer. I always leave my hair dryer plugged in, so I'm going to just... Uh, it close by I have a little small cheap version here um, that I use for watercolor painting so I'm just going to switch off the camera while I dry it quickly okay so I've dried most of the watercolor painting um, and I'm just going to take my eraser because sometimes you'll notice that with the first layer if it's very watery with certain watercolors you can lighten the pencil marks even though you put a layer over it. won't be able to remove all of the watercolor but uh, sorry pencil marks but you will be able to remove quite a lot of the pencil marks and i don't really mind the pencil marks i actually think it gives the painting something interesting um i love the way it looks 
on um, a painting. I don't mind certain watercolor markings either. That's why I fell in love with watercolor. So um, I really don't mind it either. So what we're going to do is we want to paint in this very dark little line here that we can see on the reference photo but we also want to focus on some of this little pink markings here so i'm going to go in with a little bit of the let me just see where i've added in that color um i want to use let's see maybe a bit of that and a bit of yellow so i'm going to mix a, a little in crimson mixture with a bit of this um yellow transparent yellow to create that pink that we can see here on the reference photo so and i'm gonna go in quite quickly to move around quite quickly because the paper dries quite quick and i want to take it up into there because that's where the shell stops i'm gonna have quite clean lines here and then move around and I'm going to take it all the way in there because the color goes all the way in there and then fold there so I just want to remove that because we don't want any too much of the pink in there I don't mind a little bit but we don't want too much of the pink in there and then and this is quite a staining watercolor that i use so you'll see there's quite a few markings i just want to take it all the way around like that i might go back later and just darken a few certain sections but i'm quite happy with that so now i just want to remove a little bit of that in the middle there so I'm just going to use my brush with clean water and there you go and I want to just create that little shadowy part that we can see or what I can see I'll put the reference photo on Patreon if you want to paint along and there's a bit of a yellowy orange color so I've just got a bit of the alizarin crimson mixture that is there that's a bit more orange so this is the transparent sorry this is the Hansa yellow Hansa yellow light from Daniel Smith just mix a bit of the pink mixture in there with that and I just want to go onto the tip there and I'm going to rinse my brush and then lift out and put it into these little highlights, light little markings that we can see and take it all the way in. Just move your brush slightly like this and take it with a the tip there and leave that to dry. I'm going to just add a drop more because I removed quite a lot and take a bit in there. and soften your lines this brush is my new brush that i bought from on hc it is the number eight silver black velvet 300s series and i'm not going to darken this section too much just want to take my lighten it and take your brush and just soften these lines too i like this paper it's quite um you can scrub on it quite a bit but i want to keep it also quite soft and now 
what I want to do is even though you can't really see this there's like a little indent there which I want to and then some of the markings that you can see and I'm not going to follow the reference photo exactly this is just a quick little study and then lift some of that up and for this little section here I'm going to mix a bit of this color so it's a bit of the alizarin crimson mixture with Payne's grey and I want to go in and just darken these little lines to map them in and this one um one two and then that one there and then little bits on the tips there and let it dry remove that eraser let me just dab a bit of that there's a bit too much there i removed too much there either also um okay so now i want to mix a bit more of the paints gray mixture in there just to create that because the paper is white we will have to go a slightly different color just to show the different layers of the shell and <clears throat> again just going to move it like this this one here and then the next one and then the tip of the shell I'm going to leave that to dry go back and just drop in a bit more and a bit more of the alizarin crimson mixture with a bit of the paints gray and it's very very watery mixtures And then my brush to just lift up a lot of these little markings so for now I'm happy with that just want to go in with this alizarin crimson with mixed with a yellow going to make a bit more for me on there and it's the perfect color and Create that little marking and go back and just soften these lines with your brush don't wait too long because otherwise you will not be able to remove these little hard lines that you can see want to create that little marking that we can see there there's like a little flappy bee it's going back in there and then I just want to lift out some of the little highlights there okay and then a little scrubber brush 
and we want to just leave some of the highlights there and soften it okay so for that mixture the dark brown mixture I'm gonna go with alizarin crimson but I'm gonna need a bit more so I just want to mix a little bit more in the middle here don't need a lot and then I think I might have enough burnt sienna we just mix a drop more burnt sienna next to the okay and I'm gonna mix it there the drop of that and I'm going to take a drop of the Payne's Grey. You can just see how it moves on the palette. And a bit more. And more. So I'm going to mix these two colors together. I want quite a dark color. I quite like that. So let me just okay so I want to just soften this part there might be some pigment on my brush but that's fine Just make sure that this is dry at the bottom there so that because the minute this is wet all the pigment will flow in there so just make sure it's very dry I don't want that to flow in to the whole shell I'm gonna lift up quite a lot of this pigment mixing a bit more like a darker and then just drop it in And just let it move around it's a bit too much water on my paper there I didn't wait for it to move away but it's fine and might have to go back and just add a bit more and just take a bit more of this alizarin crimson there i will definitely have to go back and darken that so i'm quickly going to mix in a little bit more alizarin crimson okay burnt sienna and a drop of the Payne's Grey so it's quite a beautiful color and a bit more you want a bit of a brownish dark purpley red color just drop it in bit more and a bit darker and just let it move around just like that And 
right now I want to go in with that same mixture but very watery and I just want to just paint in because the paper is white you do want it to show on the shell so I'm just going to go in with very watery mixture there and I don't want to just get my clean water to be too pink but I do want it to show that there is a shell on this white paper okay so quite happy with that so now I'm gonna go in with a bit more of a gray mixture but very very watery so I want to be careful I don't want to go too close to the wet markings that we just painted in those little sections there and there's like a darker shadow yeah I'm gonna just paint that in and go up but not don't touch that make sure you don't touch the top part of that the minute you touch it it will run all over the place so rather dry your painting first before you go in there I'll go back later and I'll darken that and then again just go in here and paint in that little dark shadow that we can see where it sort of falls over and this is a very pinky grayish mixture very softy I mean I don't want it to be too dark it's gonna dry quite light too And then soften those little markings there and be careful you don't want to go into this yet we want it to dry before we go into that so a bit more paints gray in this mixture yeah and I'm just going to drop it in there and And I'm not going to soften these lines too much just a touch and you will see that I didn't go close to that section there because it's still very wet okay so now I want to go to there and we'll go and paint in these little markings that we can see um, on the shell like tiny little Curls, folds. Just want to find my little scrubber brush, and let's get clean water. Make sure you have clean water with you, and let's soften those little shell markings, little folds in the shell. And with a bit of the paint on my brush, just create that little edge that we can see there. And I'm going to go in with the next one. Okay, they're sort of all different. And then these ones are going, these ones go this way. water and then just soften the markings not the whole uh, markings just the sides leave this side for instance so there's a hard line and we'll move that away and then this one here leave them in there ok 
okay and I want to go in there these ones are all this way and then there are a few little markings and soften those little hard lines and again these little hard lines and we nearly longer than 30 minutes this child is taking quite a long time to paint but like I said we don't want it to take that long so I'm going to just go in and try and finish the little sections quickly it's supposed to take much quicker so I'm going to now touch that part because that's dry now and I want to just paint in that I'll go back there later and darken that little lip or a little fold that's in there and move this and then I want to leave this little section quite light so I'm just going to just rub it around and soften these little hard lines so I need a harder scrubber brush clean water soften these lines here and Again, going to go in with a bit more. So I'm just going to wet this again here. Yeah? And a bit more of the paint's grey mixture. Just let it go everywhere. And going to take my brush and just wipe some of it up. Go in with a bit more of a darker color there. So it's again the mixture that we have on the palette that is this a uh, Payne's gray mixture with alizarin crimson. But again, I want to keep this highlight quite light. So, and we and this is quite a quick little study of a shell painting and let's do that. Okay. Okay. Um, I will have to go back maybe later with a just a drop of that if I'm burnt sienna. Might go back later and just paint in a few more markings. Because this takes the shell is quite tricky and we wanted it to be under a certain time it's not possible though but it's not a dry smash it was still very fun to paint and gonna go back there and just drop in a little bit of the few little markings that I can see there and a little bit there on the tip and just grab it up 
with your tissue paper they leave that to dry and I just want to soften that lining, let it flow a little bit into the shell. I'm going to take my tissue paper and dab it all up now. Just don't want that to be too hard. And the tissue paper. And just soften some of these little lines quickly. Yes. And let's paint the shadow. So the shadow, when I took this photo this afternoon, was here on this section. I don't mind if some of that run into the shadow because I don't mind that color reflecting into the shadow. So it's perfectly fine. And a bit more so my shadow is quite light because we can always go back later and just darken it and I do like all of these colors here so I'm just gonna take some of it and go a little bit closer to the shell just darker and leave that to run I'll go back later and just paint a little bit more and maybe make a little bit of this inside a bit darker and just change a bit of that but it is a 20 minute um, study 20 to 30 minute watercolor painting and we don't want to add too much detail so I'm quite happy with this I'm gonna let it dry and then come back and see if I need to adjust certain things I've dried the painting and I just want to go back and darken this little section here so I'm just going to take my brush and we want to add a drop more of that color in here and we want to make sure everything's dry you will have to use your hair dryer if you want to paint this in a certain amount of time so I'm not going to use too much water on my brush because I don't want all of the water on my brush to dilute the color even more I want quite an intense dark color so I had just a drop of water on my brush and then I just lifted up and picked up some more pigment on my brush and going back there and darken that and now what I have to do is because we want to create like a 3d effect on the shell I want to go in a lot with a grayer color in the middle here to create that dark hole you can see inside the shell and even though it is a bit more of a coral color I have to go in a bit more darker just to create the 3d effect that we can see on the other shell now that will dry quite nicely and I quite like all the little water color markings that you can see there, the way the water um, just dried. I'm not going to soften everything. I quite like it, I think. So, I love that in watercolor. So, and then I'm going to go back and just create that little edge there. move your brush in little circles and don't wet your brush just clean it and then dry it on they don't want too much water on your brush so I just rinse it in water and dry it on a towel and then move it around and now I want to just go back very watery mixture and do the same thing here on these little parts here because it's more like a shadowy part just where the 
goes down in little steps. And there. And to soften those little lines. And then the side to leave a little gap there. And I'm going to go back with a little bit more of a grey, darker paints grey mixture. This is just there on the palette to create this shadow. And I'm going to go very dark against the shell. And then I'm going to use my little scrubber brush and just soften those lines with a bit of water because I want it to flow everywhere. And the And there's a little fold there, so I just want to paint that in. There we go. And soften it. And we've painted another shell. It's maybe a bit longer than 30 minutes, but it's not that bad um, it was fun so I've painted this muscle shell which is a ripped muscle I think it is a ripped muscle um, that's the only one I could find in my shell book which is let me show you my shell book I've had this book for many 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 years um, I bought it in 2006 um, and there are loads of interesting things in this book I love shells and obviously um, I just love the ocean and love the beach so yes this book comes in very handy when I search for shells and just you know it's very interesting like I have one of these exact shells, which is this one. Um, and we've collected these shells over the years for many, many years. And these are, I'm not sure if you find them everywhere. I'm sure you find them everywhere. But these ones are from South Africa, the coast of South Africa. You can find them all over. And I've decided to paint a few that we had around the house and this is one of them that I painted during the week and then I painted this one today which I'm busy editing right now which will be part of the 20 actually 20 to 30 minute um, shell challenges just to see if you can paint something in 30 minutes um, especially if you're busy and you don't have a lot of time uh, during the week or on weekends and you just want to paint something quickly you just want to hold your brushes in your hand and you just want to um, you know paint something like a quick study these are not perfect they are not um, realistic but they are very loose watercolor little shells that I painted and it is so much fun and I've used all different colors um, on my palette I didn't even this was from the marshmallow rose that I painted. So all the colors on here, I painted this shell with. And then I've painted this one, which is already on YouTube. And then I also painted this one, which are quite a few different shells that we have. And I'm gonna paint quite a few more because it's lovely. We're gonna frame them because we do live near the ocean and we're gonna put them on the wall. They're very loose little studies, little, little fun little studies to do. And they were painted in less than 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. 
and I've used cold paste for the color paper. 300 GSM and amazing paper. You can scrub on it. Um, lovely paper to use for watercolor.